Hey folks, nice to have you here for another stream. This is um, a very special stream for me. Uh, I'm building a keyboard that I myself like a lot. Um, it's the um, the LZ Iron from uh, Lifezone, uh, a Korean keyboard designer. And um, I've been waiting for this quite a while. Uh, I've got my own personal color scheme, which I'm going to be talking about um, a little bit more later. Um, and I just want to dive right into the uh, the build this time. Um, and uh, this is something I've usually done before the streams in my other um, in my other builds. And uh, this time I want to do it in the stream just to um, just to show you something that I that I um, that I do. Um, here's a little box with stabilizer parts. And in this segment of the box, there's a little bit of lube. It's um, some Crytox uh, lube. And here's uh, a bunch of um, cherry stabilizer sliders which I have already clipped. So um, I just stripped uh, tons of stabilizers, got like a big box of these uh, sliders and clipped them in a, in, a, in a large amount. So I've got a little box of pre-clipped um, sliders here and then I loop them and then I keep them here for my assembly. So what I do now is I put these sliders into the screw-in stabilizer uh, housings here, making sure that the little nub here goes goes right here Just making sure that I align them correctly I hope uh, I get it right so this is usually something I do uh, in the preparation time before I start uh, filming the video like even though these videos are <laughs> super uh, lightweight to to make um, I do uh, I do try to prepare it a little bit to make them a little less boring for you. Um, I hate touching them because I don't want to get lube on my fingers. It's not like I can uh, run to the bathroom and wash it off. Okay, so I'm going to put this here because I'm going to be needing these little screws a little bit later. and. We're going to see if I put them in the right way. Okay, looks great. This is going to be the, the right shift stabilizer. I'm, um, I'm just going for a very standard layout this time. Um, no fancy stuff, except for it's ISO, so it's going to be a very standard ISO layout build. Um, going for a standard um, 1.25 unit bottom row, um, 6 and a quarter unit um, spacebar, um, so very basic stuff. Um, if I don't have a, like a wind keyless case, I don't like to go really crazy on the on the layout. I wanna, um, I'm trying to kind of find my my own personal favorites for um, for the various um, standard layouts that you can find. And um, when I um, when I find a full bottom row on a keyboard, um, I usually go for the um, the very common modern. Uh, Win key um, uh, layout. Good. Here's the PCB. It's, this is already where, where this is, where this becomes quite a piece of art. Uh, this PCB has been custom designed just for this one keyboard. You can tell it, there's a little Iron Man um, icon here, and there are a couple of like oddly placed um, uh, RGB LEDs on the top of the PCB. One, two, three. And they all lead to some diffusers, uh, acrylic diffusers, and there's of course a, a variety of um, um, underglow um, RGB LEDs on the bottom. So this is not your run-of-the-mill um, um, Liku um, 10 kilos PCB, but a special edition just for this one keyboard. And I hope I don't break it during assembly. I'm going to be needing some screws. I'll be grabbing a couple from here. Two, five. Mm. 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 Oh, that's all 
already enough, I guess. Okay, let's uh, start with the space bar. This seems to be the right. Oh. <laughs> Yep, looks good. These Liku PCBs, the more modern ones, they all support uh, split space bars, which is not my cup of tea, but it's a very nice option for those looking for the more exotic layouts. And what I really um, what I really like about the Liku PCBs is he's done a great job on the silk screen. Um, you can see it here. Every basically every uh, every uh, key uh, hole has um, every sorry every switch uh, placement has um, a little legend, and um, especially the bottom row. Even though it is very cramped because it offers tons of layout support, um, still. Uh, has um, a little marking for every for every switch, so um, you can tell without trial and error uh, where a, um, a certain switch goes when you want to build um, your your given bottom row. Sometimes I'm just having a really hard time figuring out which exact um, hole a switch uh, goes in when. Um, when assembling the bottom row. <sighs> oh yeah, there we go. This is unfortunately the most complicated part of the whole build. Um, The, um, the cutout for the ISO enter stabilizer is always a bit messed up because this part of the PCB is just very crowded by the um, quite um, different stabilizer concept of ISO and ISO layout. Ah, ISO and ANSI layout, of course. Um, it's this is a really nice location to have screw in stabilizers if you have very few and you want to save them for uh, for a good um, for a good use and um, use them here <laughs> for the for the um, ISO enter or ANSI enter good. Important lesson once more, always start with the stabilizers. We've had the discussion a couple of days before. One of the biggest disadvantages, if not the one big disadvantage of uh, cherry stabilizers is you can't fix them once you started soldering the switches unless you really go um, all the way desoldering, de desoldering them uh, all over again. Ah, <sighs> very nice. <laughs> now I understand. I was a little concerned. Like, why is there why is there this little crooked cutout in the in the plate here? Is is there something wrong? Is this like a a mishap during the plate cutout? I, I, I was having a hard time believing it, and then I realized he made a cutout for the logo. That's so awesome. <laughs> Nice. Okay, next step. We're gonna be populating the plate. Let me try if I can get the light a little bit better here. Yeah, I'm just gonna put it somewhere where it doesn't hurt. Okay, this time I put all the switches into my nice little switch mod plate. This has the advantage that I can just give them a nice heavy squeeze right before I mount them. making sure that they are hopefully 
all nicely closed. Some of you might remember one or the other video I was having issues with the um, with uh, some switches that wouldn't close properly all the way. <sighs> if you have a tight plate and the switch doesn't close properly due to uh, switch film modding, um, you might want to do something like that. That's a, <laughs> that's a damn. That's a tight plate. Like a tight switch modding plate. go first switch in I I should put on my gloves. I'm just um, putting. I'm just p putting fingerprints on the um, on the plate, and I'd hate to see that happen. It's already got some fingerprints, and since I'm also a little unhappy with some of the stuff that's been going on so far, I might just take this out again. Take this out again. Take my little plate and give it a little rub. That's just some isopropyl isopropanol alcohol, isopropyl blue. It's just some don't drink booze. did that happen? Like, what did I do? Why is it like this? Never mind. Okay. Fingerprints gone. Very nice. Oh yeah, another thing that I shouldn't forget is always put something soft underneath your um, your PCB. You don't want to push it too hard into the table. It's just going to break uh, SMD components. Very uh, nasty. Okay, so this is a very light plate fit, I gotta say. Um, haven't had this in a while. It's also a very light PCB fit. <laughs> um, pretty neat. Yep. <laughs> okay, ah, it already starts here like. <laughs> Look at this uh, placement here. You can see there's like tons of different options to place your switch. When you swap it around, you can see that there's legends. The out the outermost hole is one unit, 1.25, 1.5. So you know that if you want to do 1.25, you put it in in a way that it will um, that the little leg will go into the 1.25 hole. Um, we can continue doing this. Oh yeah. Here we go. And it's uh, sometimes it's the it's the uh, the the thick leg and sometimes it's a thin leg. Just gotta make sure um, you get one leg into the uh, into the right um, hole. Six point two five. Ah, it looks centered. Neat.
once we got this bottom row set up, um, the rest is going to go a lot easier. Okay, there we go. Eh. Aww. Such a bum. How did this even happen? That's what you get when you want to do everything right. Oh, yeah, of course. Okay, I think it's time to admit that I messed up. Just gonna take him out again. Gonna make sure I keep this side pushed down. I'm gonna do it all the way again. Just do it right this time. No. Nope. Yeah, this is really a um, a pretty light uh, light fitting plate. Um, I rather fight a little more with the plate. Um, and have a, uh, a tighter fit in the end than uh, have a light plate fit and um, risk a looser overall fit. Overall fit? Overall? Uh, yeah. Pronunciation is a little off. Yeah. But this is gonna be, this is gonna be fine, I guess. Switches out. I also realized during my last build that um, like a handful of these uh, Nixie switches, which have, have been uh, in good use before I harvested them, they had they gave me some chattering issues. So um, I replaced. I actually uh, like in the, in the TXCP build. Um, I actually ended up desoldering a couple of them and um, just to replace the switch bottoms. Switch bottoms are of course fully interchangeable with any um, Cherry MX switch bottom and um, I still have tons of uh, spare switch bottoms left. It's always wise if you want to do a, a Nixie switch build and um, you, you don't you're not sure that all the switches are in perfect condition. Most of these boards have seen heavy use, of course. That's uh, what they what they were there for. <laughs> um, then uh, I recommend having um, a couple of switch bottoms uh, handy um, to replace um, some switches just in case. the pair of brand new gloves they always um, they always feel a bit stiff when you when you grab some brand new gloves that's why I usually like um, <laughs> I usually like taking them out in the garden for a day or two um, or for some other construction working or something like that like um, wearing them for a day <laughs> a great great opportunity to um, to break in those gloves is uh, helping someone move <laughs> After a day worth of um, moving work, uh, they will be smooth like a second skin. But right now they're giving me like all these, uh, ah, all these stiffness. They're not behaving well. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, about the color scheme of this keyboard. <laughs> um, I've I've uh, I've hyped this uh, keyboard build a little bit in the in the desk store, the um, Telegram chat. <laughs> I kept calling it the LZ Eisen. Uh, Eisen is the German word for iron, and um, the color scheme I picked for this keyboard um, is is um, representing the uh, the German national colors, where I took the liberty of replace a gold with brass, and I got a black bottom and a red top. So we got nice little um, um, black, red, and gold, and thus uh, I, I dubbed this build the um, the LZ uh, Eisen, and um, so far, like I'm I'm kind of happy with the with the way this color scheme turned out. The the red is beautiful, the black is nice and matte. Um, I really enjoy it. Um, it's not everyone's like with with all the more fancy color options, you always uh, you always gonna find some people who who don't like it, but that's okay. It's a it's a very exotic keyboard. It's a it's an exotic design. Like to to some people, it just might look like a, a standard run of the mill ten keyless, but you're gonna see the case, and it is one of the more um, controversial designs of um, of Life Zone. Uh, the Korean keyboard designer who designed this um, this beauty. Um, but uh, I, I had the chance to grab one of those, and I, I just couldn't. Uh, I just couldn't resist. Yeah, and I'm, I'm trying to make this a thing that, whenever I do these standard 1.25 um, unit bottom rows. I'm gonna roll with the centered caps lock and not gonna go for the for the stepped one. Yeah, it's probably a good idea. Just the, the step caps lock just belongs to the win keyless 1.5 unit bottom row. That's uh, that's my motto. I'm just gonna stick stick to that. Hopefully, it's still gonna be a bit ugly with the with all the compact layouts. Whenever a layout gets compact and the the arrows are moved in a little bit into the the bottom row I usually tend to go with a with a half half bottom row which means like a 1.25 on this side the um, six uh, 6.25 unit spacebar and then I conveniently go with two 1.5 units um, mods on the other side of the spacebar which in my opinion gives a very clean look um, but um, well it's uh, just uh, and a, a quite a mix of um, of layouts. <laughs> I just realized that <laughs> if I wanted to go for a split for a split shift, um, I'd be running out of switches anyway. <laughs> I only got 88 switches for this one, and ISO is um, ISO 10 keyless is uh, 88 switches, so there's uh, there's no spares this time. And this nice little switch modding plate here, I got it off Taobao, I can really recommend it, I think I've, I've shown it in a different video, uh, just get one of those, get them printed or make one yourself or buy them off Taobao or see if you can find it elsewhere on the internet, <laughs> don't buy it from Spirit because um, many people don't like him, uh, yeah get one of those, make your life 150% easier. Um, and if you feel like it was a good idea, feel free to donate to my um, Kickstarter campaign. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Uh, don't don't waste your money. I'm I'm doing that for you. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing my own my new switch. It's called the Old Dizzle. Ah, that was super cringy. But every everybody got his, his own switch. I need one. I need my own switch too. Ah, oh, that's the off center. Do we want an off center? Um, off center always limits this a little bit, since we're going full standard here. Oh my God, we just lost the switch. Yeah, I 
if we use the off center uh, switch placement, we can't use um, any um, any standard OEM keycaps. This is something only Cherry did. Crazy freaks. Okay, how you like it so far? I think it's pretty neat. And looking at the live uh, video, um, I also think I need to change my ceiling lights here. Uh, glare much. Uh, well, nothing I can do about it right now. Maybe for the next video. Or I shouldn't be doing any more uh, funky um, plates. Yeah. Overall, it's got a, it's got a pretty like, loose fit, I gotta say. Uh, nothing I can do about it. Um, just the way it was designed. Um, so I'm gonna do my two-way, uh, like, oh, three-step soldering thingy, my bob. Um, Solder the solid leg first, then go for the um, which way around? This way around. Solid leg first, reheat, apply pressure, let it cool, and then solder the other leg. Okay. And today, you're um, you get to see the most beautiful soldering iron out there. If you can find a more beautiful soldering iron out there, let me know and I'm gonna sell my kidney to get it. Look at this beauty. It's an SMD soldering iron. It is just so freaking fast. And you can, the way you change tips with this soldering iron, is you just pull it out. <laughs> it's just a, a 3.5 millimeter uh, jack. So uh, so amazing! <laughs> like every every tip costs more than a decent Chinese knockoff soldering station. But <sighs> this is uh, this is love. This soldering iron. Okay, I'm gonna turn on the fan now. Probably hate it, but I gotta do it. And I gotta I gotta up the light. Let's see where I can put it. Okay. Yeah, sorry for all the glaring. Let me put it here. Oh, this is nice. Well, this is it's not nice but it's not as bad let's put it that way Sloppy here. As with all Liku PCBs, this seems to be very well designed. I really like it. Um, I'm getting very little, um, very little difference in the in the different pads, in the thermal mass. Like they all melt pretty equally. Solar sinks in nicely because it's um, it's got nice little vias to, to suck the solder right into the joint, giving us a nice uh, stable, nice and stable um, connection.
it's so incredible how they I don't know how they do it but such a tiny tip can generate so much heat and transfer so much heat in such an intensely short time if you've been working with different soldering irons um, you're learning that like investing a couple of bucks in a nice soldering iron is such a nice thing such a nice way to treat yourself I'm not saying get a weller get a vela or get a get this iron or this iron just saying like don't don't try to save money if you solder a lot and you want to you want to you want to have a good time soldering um, it's usually worth it looking at the different options considering getting like a like a little more comfortable soldering iron a nicer one there's definitely um, a huge um, range of different uh, irons you can get and the price range also reflects the, uh, the capabilities of, of heat transfer and, um, and temperature control of these irons Oh yeah, I've, I've realized that a couple of um, new players to the keyboard game uh, have been uh, watching my videos. I'm super flattered. Nice to have uh, some people looking at these videos and I actually like maybe taking inspiration from one or the other thing that I've been doing. I'm not saying that I'm I'm much of a of a of a teacher or anything for these this kind of stuff, but. Like there's great soldering tutorials that are not my videos, <laughs> and um, there's probably also great keyboard building tutorials. But you might just want to like look at a couple of little tricks and things I do and say, oh well, that's a nice idea. I might put this into my my own soldering routine. Um, oh yeah, ju so just saying, it's uh, great to see that a couple of young, uh, new new young players uh, also been uh, checking out my videos. Uh, and I wanted to invite you all to uh, come over and take a look um, uh, on Desk Authority. Um, I'm, I'm currently running a new um, a new version of the so-called Rebel Hall Kit. That's an idea we had on Desk Authority a while ago, um, where you can um, you just write a short application. We just wanted to make it a bit formal, and. Um, um, we, we collect uh, applications from a couple of n new young members on the authority. No, no fee or anything required. You can just sign up to the authority, um, get an account, yeah, maybe post a couple, make a, a couple of posts, participate a little bit in the community, um, and um, just write a short application. Tell us a bit about your keyboard background, about your keyboard history, and about your keyboard goals and aims, of course, um, and. Um, the um like the the price <laughs> uh is um um i got i got quite a lot of um keyboards uh, left over from my recycler halls um that um yeah you, they, you, most most enthusiasts just have uh, by the dozens in their basements um but they're still like a bit a bit tedious to come by for for new players and um so there was this idea to, to take like the, the most common keyboards around, which is uh, an Alps keyboard, like for example uh, one of these uh, Dell keyboards, the more modern Dell Black Alps keyboards, um, a Model F keyboard with the, um, oh sorry, <laughs> a Model F keyboard, no, 
um, a Model M keyboard with a buckling spring technology and uh, some uh, some uh, Cherry G80 keyboard with the MX switches. Uh, bundle them together, like put them all three in a, in a box and uh, sell them for 50 bucks flat. It's 50 euros, <laughs> 50 euros flat, uh, plus shipping of course. And um, yeah, just give you a nice little box to unwrap and grab um, these uh, three like uh, different kinds of keyboards and play around with them a little bit. Uh, take them apart, clean them up. You're gonna get them uh, hella dirty and um, like just the way I find them at the recycler, you're just gonna get them that way. Maybe a couple of missing, uh, like um, I'm trying not, I'm not trying to like not put in some missing keycaps. I'm ju just trying to give you something that that's actually working. Um, and um, you can um, you can clean them up. You can uh, mess around with them, experiment a little bit, um, mod them, take them apart, harvest them, whatever you want to do. Like just go crazy. Um, but it uh, would be great if you could uh, <laughs> just post a couple of pictures of whatever you've been doing with them. And um, yeah, that's basically all there is. Just want to see. Um, just want to see some people uh, write a, write a short application, and um, and just uh, want to make sure that people who take good care of them get them, and uh, don't want to see them uh, turn out <laughs> like end up on on Mac market straight away. Um, yeah, I guess just there's no say, shame in selling them. I mean, I'm not saying uh, you can't sell them, you can't sell them, but at least like. Uh, tear them apart and clean them up and mess around with them a little bit before you before you sell them again just uh, yeah help you get into the hobby help you get addicted to all this stuff and um, help you make the, the same mistakes um, I'm making every day joining group buys and um, popping caps of old keyboards Yeah, I'm not, I haven't been advertising Desk Authority a lot lately in my, like, especially not in my videos because <laughs> most of the people that I, that I know about these videos in the first place, um, are Desk Authority people anyway. But I've, yeah, well, since I've been getting non Desk Authority viewers recently, um, I just thought I'd uh, mention it. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's the other, <laughs> it's the other community, um, and um, we're just uh, we're just a bunch of grumpy old men, and um, we um, we are still nice. Like uh, unless you you, you um, come across a bit cocky, <laughs> it's not the right place for people with an attitude. But um, it's a great place for projects. It's a great place for photo photography. It's a great place for keyboard signs, like the real kind of signs with um, with a nice wiki, where you can, where everyone can participate. Everyone's always invited to participate in the Desk Authority wiki. Of course, we have our one wiki overlord. Uh, all hail Daniel Birdsmore. But um, everyone's allowed to participate. I've I've edited couple of wiki pages and I didn't get spanked at least not in the way that I was hoping I would oh, we're almost done here and I'm almost uh, out of stuff to, to ramble Okay, does this look good? Let's find out. Oh, 
don't don't touch the camera don't touch the camera I'm happy yeah I'm quite happy um, it's, um, more vent time okay excuse, please excuse the whatever happens on that well, screw this I hope I don't shake the, the camera a lot problem is I've got a nice little screen right there where I see the live uh, picture so I can always see if I'm working within the visible area but it, it uh, obstructs the um, the airstream from the vent, so I'm getting uh, very bad ventilation here. Never mind. I've gotten cancer already for these videos. A little bit of solar fumes ain't gonna um, make it much of a difference now. I didn't mean to be an ass. I was just referring to something that happened in an unpublished video um, where I did something very stupid. Some people know about it. And I ran around like a little girl who got stung by a bee afterwards saying, oh my god, oh my god, I'm gonna die. I didn't, I didn't really die. But let's just put it that way. I'm not gonna do any more videos drunk. Like I wasn't even really drunk. I was just I just had had a beer before and during, and I thought, well, let's do a, a fancy little live stream. And I got carried away, and I worked a little too fast, a little faster than my brain could work. And stupid stuff happens. I'm like I'm a little I'm a little redneck at heart, and um, that's what you get when you uh, give me a Dremel and a carbon plate. Enough said. <laughs> like, <laughs> look at this heat transfer. Bam. 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 Like if, if I'm getting chatter on any of these keycaps, uh, in any of these switches later, which I assume I will, um, I'm not gonna bother you with it too much. So um, yeah, I'll just I'll just finish this build, put on the keycaps, and then do like a little, like a couple of days test run on the keyboard, and just make sure that all the switches work fine. Um, I don't want to keep you waiting. Like if I have one or two switches not working properly, I might do it on video. But if I catch more than one sw one two switches um, like a little uh, off contact, um, I'm not gonna bother with it today. It's just too time consuming. Oh yeah, another topic we had lately uh, is a desoldering station or like desoldering equipment. I was, I was super surprised to see that how many people are actually using these uh, spring-powered um, manual um, solar suckers that come with your um, that come with uh, with most cheap soldering sets. This is this is hell. Like <laughs> these are meant to to help you like fix one or two soldering joints when you mess up with your little hobby project with your Arduino. They're not, they're not really meant to help you desolder a, a 200, uh, like a 400 uh, soldering uh, joint uh, Cherry G80. Um, I thought they were only available in the US, but you can actually get something like a soldering iron that has one of these spring powered uh, solder suckers built in, which pretty much means like just imagine one of these hand manual solder suckers um, with a hot tip 
and you can just put it over your uh, your joint and press the trigger and it's gonna suck the solder in which is an epic invention like this is uh, Chinese technology at its peak um, and these things are available uh, in the US I saw them for like eight nine US dollars eight or nine US dollars and you can get them in Germany from Amazon uh, for nine euros delivered prime overnight there is no excuse to ever do any desoldering without one of these things nine bucks delivered Yeah, so they're obviously available in one, uh, 110 volts and in 240 volts. So both versions available. Check out your local eBay. Um, get one of these things. They're going to make your life so much easier. Uh, work fast because you don't want to melt anything. I don't think they're temperature controlled or anything. But for 10 bucks, this is just such a deal. And they are, they're helping you so much getting... Uh, getting boards desoldered and should you be doing uh, like um, competitive desoldering or uh, if you plan to desolder more than one board a uh, at a time um, I recommend looking at like these uh, vacuum powered um, like these vacuum pump soldering stations with a little gun I think the most popular one is called ZD 915 I, I haven't found it with with 110 volts yet or it's more expensive with the 110 volts I'm not sure but the, uh, the 220 volts version is available uh, for uh, 60 to 80 euros depending on where you stay and they're they're quite a lifesaver I actually had one of these for uh, for a long time I desoldered maybe 10 15 boards with them and uh, it was a it was a great desoldering station um, but um, I have some. I just wanted to have something more comfortable, and I wanted to spoil myself a little bit, so I got a different one and sold my uh, my old one. And I think it's still doing its its job somewhere in somewhere in Romania, somewhere in Romania, I think. Yeah, sold it to a pal from there. The little trade. Okay, here we go. Get this one out of the way. Okay, next step. Before we make any more mistakes, we're gonna connect this one to the screen and see if all the keys register. Sorry, give me a moment. Okay, don't get a headache. Here we go. Mighty keyboard gods, please make this work. Oh yeah, you gotta look at this Christmas tree. Down, 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 down. Here we go. Looks nice. Looks nice. Nice once more. Yep, good. Oh. Just give me a moment with these switches. Mm, okay, thanks, I'm done. Good. 
Yeah, that was like a, an average performance. You witnessed it. Here we go. Light. Yeah, looks like all the switches work fine. First try, yay. It's a magical night. Okay, I started assembling it. Oh wait, gotta put on my gloves. <laughs> Don't wanna ruin the case. Like all these people disassembling cars interior. Ah, assembling cars interior. Okay, let's put this up here. So. Oh, no, wait, there's no LEDs. Okay, yeah, so I thought we, mi we missed the LEDs. But no, 10 kilos don't have no LEDs. Okay, iron. Okay, look at this beauty. LZ iron. They know how to make me want to spend money. Okay. Sorry for the for the noise, but I see some dust in there. Where's my little brush? Here's my little brush. Oh, I want a little brush. Here's the little brush. Nice little brush. Just want to make sure that there's no like little drops of um, of flux here. I don't want to get. I don't want them to get in between um, the. Uh, I don't want to get them uh, stuck in between here. Okay. So, it looks like couple of these short screws and then we need a couple of these long screws. Okay, let me check something. Ah, see? You see these little holes here, they make space for the for the screw heads. Okay. Find the thread. It's a very neat design, I think. Plate isn't just sandwiched. It's also held in place here. I'm gonna loosen the screws just a little bit, make sure that whatever 
room we have for alignment here is well used. I hope I found a nice orientation. I mean, it was just basically a, a fraction of a millimeter each way. Let's put the top on. I really fancy the, the red. Same old story, find the thread and don't, don't tighten it all the way and always cross, cross, um, cross fix them. I don't know what's the right term for this, like cross, t tighten them. Oops, that's not. it yet. Okay, let's give it a final. Yeah, did I do that? Oh, I've seen worse. Okay. Nice and heavy. Really happy. I'm really happy. Okay. Last step. A little surprise. I hope this one looks okay. Okay, we'll see later. I might replace this. This is like, uh, this was not actually run by Originative. This is just a box that GMK had from Originative uh, group buys. Uh, so don't try looking for this keycap set in the Originative key, um, store. They won't have it. Bar. Oh yeah, the seven and the six unit space bar. Yeah, I can I can really take off the gloves now. We're safe. Okay, this is a very neat little um, 
a group by that was run in the in the German community. Um, and um, I'm super happy to uh, to been able to participate. Thanks very much for running this. It's um, it's just such a great um, chance to get some German Dolch, uh, Dolch, 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 whatever, whatever the um, the American pronunciation of this word is. Unfortunately, it has a totally different meaning in German. It's like a its own word in German, so I'm, I'm having a super hard time giving it an English pronunciation. And thanks to the amazing GMK trays, um, <laughs> putting the keycaps on is just a, a very simple job here. I've done a, a red keyboard with the um, Dolch caps before, and I quite liked it. Currently realizing that this looks shitty. I'm sorry. Got to find a better option here. The black just doesn't match anything, and the red neither. So um, I might just go crazy around there. Do something. Do something super silly. So far, I think it's a colorful board already, and. Um, I might just roll with the uh, standard Dolch caps. These are not the caps I've been looking for. I want those two here. I want the. Uh, but I want the um, the deep dishes. I don't want the nubs. Yeah. So um, it's funny. Like last year seem have seems to have been the year of the of the Dolch group buys. There's been Sky Dolch. There's been. Uh, There's been the German Deutsch. There's been a, I think there's been a Deutsch group by by um, by Originative, just in um, in standard ANSI, um, like with a couple of internet, like a couple of layout options, of course. Um, but there's been more. There's been the. I think there's been like five different Deutsch group buys at that time, and it was super funny. <laughs> you could uh, you could just. Oh no! Nah. I hate myself. Why? Uh, I mess. I did mess up a switch placement here. Yeah. Well, it's gonna be a long night then. Gotta desolder that one. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I had it all figured out.
you have to turn this around, Draw the screws out again. <sighs> yeah, sometimes I'm just not nearly as smart as I want it to be. Okay, if the markings on the PCB are seriously wrong, no, I, I just got it wrong myself. It must have been me. I can't. Oh, wait, wait, before, we, before I royally screw this up, I'm gonna fill the other half of the bottom row. That's good. Okay, here's the bad guy. Yeah, look at this. Who made the mistake? What? this trouble just for two little uh, I even have the wrong tip <sighs> this one I guess That's it, that's all there is to it. <laughs> Such a great exercise, what happens when you get sloppy with the bottom row. <laughs> this one gets hot so fast. Wasn't so bad, was it? Remember how neatly I placed the screws the first time. I was like, oh yeah, they, they gotta be all perfect and nicely aligned. Uh, this is all gone now. Just gonna just gonna glue them in somehow. But no matter how how bad my mood is. I would never use a machine to drill these in. Just don't do it. You can use a machine to take them out. That's no biggie. But never use one to drill them in. You're just going to hurt everything. Okay. What do we have here?
Oh yeah, you wanted to see this, I guess. Nice. Oh, never mind. Okay, let's flip this. Put those back in. The more often I repeat this, the better you will be able to learn <laughs> how, to, how to screw in machine screws. <laughs> I'm just trying to think positive. There must be something good to this. Okay. Gonna give them. I'm going to tighten them right now. No, wait. Finish this. Mm. I mean, it's just so nice when you get proper, um, proper GMK keycaps for um, originals, cherry stuff. Just such a neat fit. I hate the stuff that you sometimes get when you um, when you put signature plastics or other third-party space bars or stabilizers together, like the the DSA space bars from Signature Plastics are a pain to put on cherry stabilizers because somebody I think they know a little bit better what the exact dimensions for these stabilizers should be. Ja, ich bin Eisenmann. Let's uh, wire it up. <laughs> That's pretty nice. Yeah, some of you haters might say, "Oh man, it looks like a like a tuned up BMW," but yes, it does. Ah, oh, it's so nice. It's so bold. It's in your face. <sighs> yeah, what's uh, what else can I say? It's a it's a very nice build. I love it. A genius work by Life Zone. Um, it's a bit eccentric I guess for a for a custom build but it's got some amazing details I love how they turned out I love how the colors turned out uh, the build was great fun 
The only remark I have is that the that the plate and the PCB fit for the switches was light. Yeah, it was just light. <laughs> And um, I was I prefer a bit tighter fit. Um, just gonna do a little typing around here. What you would expect from um, from Mixi switches, very uh, vintage black sounds. Like the the sound, the noise they make is very vintage blacky. Yeah, well, let's just say uh, thanks very much for watching. Um, it was a great pleasure having you with me, if you <laughs> stayed with me uh, throughout the whole video. And um, thanks for skipping through for the uh, to the rest. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. It's um, it's definitely one of my, my nicest collection keyboards. I, I have to say the, the, the colors, as I mentioned a couple of hundred times, uh, turned out to be nice and great and they mean something to me. Um, yeah, I didn't just randomly pick them. Um, people picked um, like I've seen people pick the uh, the American um, uh, flag colors like uh, red, white, and blue. And so I thought, why not uh, go for the German uh, <laughs> colors, national colors, which also uh, like perfectly uh, match the Iron Man theme, which is also black and red. Uh, if you just add a nice little brass plate, you got um, German national colors, the new ones. <laughs> Yeah, so thanks very much and um, yeah, have a good time.